guys, welcome to another episode of The Clueless Drinker. It's another one of those episodes where this is like take three, and I've already poured, tasted and sniffed it. Uh, but yeah, let's get straight to it. Today we've got the King Goblin from Witchwood. I had the glass, but I'm not wearing the t-shirt. You can't really see the t-shirt. But yeah, King Goblin, 6.6%, quickly read you the blurb on the back. Only ever brewed under a full lunar moon, with crystal malts and sovereign hops for a rich, smooth, sublimely satisfying taste of pure beer indulgence. Now, Witchwood, I'm a massive fan of them. King Goblin, it's, I haven't had this for quite a while, so I really didn't know what to expect when I was going into it. But yeah, before I get into the beer itself, really nice label. I love, obviously, the lunar feel with the silver, and you've got the Hobgoblin dressed in black. The beer itself, yeah, the lunar moon stuff, I like that. I like the novelty factor of it, um, but I don't know if like the science of that works or if they've even you know actually gone for the scientific approach because obviously the moon affects the tide and things like that. Uh, but I just suspect that they're having a little bit of fun. They probably and I've never I've not researched this one. Um, I very re rarely research beers prior to reviewing. Um, mainly because I'm the clueless drinker and this is much of a journey for me as it is for potential people who were in my situation a few years ago looking for new beers to try, didn't know where to start because there's a really big range. You don't have to go to specialty bottle shops and pay five quid for a 330ml bottle. You've got so many great opportunities on your front door and I've actually hardly drank any craft beer, whether it's from England or from overseas, since I've been back. And to be honest, I'm really enjoying just going to supermarkets and buying beers because they've got a great range, nine times out of ten. And place like Asda, where I picked this up in like the four for five pound deal, they've got stuff like Goose Island. So, supermarkets, yeah, it's great to support bottle shops because the brewer obviously, and a lot of the smaller brewers obviously get more money that way and they get more support more exposure but if you're on a budget and you're just starting out this way then go to your supermarket check out the local discount supermarkets go to b and bargains home and bargains go to your local corner shop go to places like that a lot of them have now got these three for a fiver four for a fiver four for six quid it's always great opportunity and you don't have to be outlandish straight away. Anyway, where was I going with that? I don't know. Just shut up here and get on with the beer. Capitalism. Beer in a glass. And like I said, it's already been poured. It's got like a almost a rusty amber sort of hue to it. Um, it doesn't look as deep, but then again, I'm just going off the lighting in this room as the normal hobgoblin. But it looks nice. It's nice and rich. Not too much going on inside, very slight carbonation rolling up the sides. And you've got a nice, just under one finger's worth of tan, slightly tanned coloured head. Uh, even though the thin bubbles, uh, it seems to be quite resilient. And a uh, head on a beer, it's not really an issue for me. I don't judge beers because they've got good lacing or if the head stays or if the head dissipates quickly. I mean, visually, I like it when there's a little bit of head. <coughs> Let's give it a sniff. My first impression when I smelled this was it's as if you've got caramel in the pan and for some strange reason you've squirted over some lemon juice. That's what I'm getting. It's got that citrusy, uh, like, brown sugar caramel sort of tone to it. Uh, very slightly hoppy. I'm not too familiar at all with the Sovereign hops, so I'm not too sure whether they're purely for flavour, scent, or for colorization and texture. But um, yeah, you're definitely getting some hop notes in there, but it's not overly hoppy. The more I'm thinking about it, and I know this is usually a bad sign, but it's not actually off-putting at all is a very slight butterscotch tone in there in the sniff as well. But yeah, I'm also getting very slightly um, yoghurt with compote in there, like a cherry compote, where it's toned down and neutralised slightly by the creaminess of the yoghurt. Quite um, an announced 
pronounced, I should say, um, pepperiness there as well. <coughs> Actually looking at herbs, trying to cycle stuff in my brain, but nothing's coming to mind. It's not too earthy, not too herby. Well, it's like very bittersweet. So let's give it a taste. Very malty, very biscuity, very, very smooth. The mouthfeel is really, really nice. There's not much carbonation there, and it shows in the mouthfeel. It's nice and creamy in the mouth, dissipates really nicely. It's not too sharp, not too quick, and it doesn't linger in the mouth either. Very satisfying mouthfeel. Caramelized nuts are in there as well. But again, like with the sniff, it's as if you've squirted a little bit of lemon juice on the top of it. And uh, yeah, all in all, it's a very tasty beer. And the butterscotch notes I was getting in the sniff aren't really evident in the taste. So I don't think this is a skunked one. I've been very lucky since I've been back in the UK to not have a skunked beer as of yet. But um, yeah... It's nice, it's, it is indulgent, like it says on the label. They have got that right. But it's not one that I would gravitate to on a regular basis. Um, it's just a little bit too rich for me. Well, not too rich for me, but it's a little bit richer than I go for when I'm casually drinking. I mean, you could easily session this when you're going out, or if you've got company, or if you're going for a meal. And it would really go well with a roast dinner and a nice hearty dessert at the end. So it complements really big meaty flavours, really big meaty indulgence. If you're looking to branch out because you're bored of drinking stuff like Budweiser and Foster's but you don't know where to start and you see the Witchwood stuff, maybe stay away from this one until you've drank a few of the others. Go directly for the Hobgoblin or even the Dr. Thirsties for something a little bit more crisp and refreshing. Uh, get used to Witchwood first before you attempt this one. But if you are a seasoned drinker then definitely give it a try. Um, it is, I think it's uh, what's his name, William Geist, uh, one of my favourite beer reviewers. I just love the way he talks to the camera. Um, I think he reviewed this recently, so as always I'll be putting other reviews down below for a much more informed opinion. 7.5 out of 10 for me. Um, it's really nice, but it's not my go-to Witchwood beer. But yeah, like I said, I really like the whole concept of it. So guys, thank you very much for watching, and um, yeah, if you tried this beer, as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Of course, for more beer reviews, check out my Clueless Drinker playlist. See you guys later. Thank you.